Today I'm a bit in the kitchen. I'm gonna tell you why. And Lucian is uh, operating our. Hello. Sorry, it's fly season, obviously. Uh, Lucian is going to be my helper and my cameraman this morning. Uh, just say hi, Lucian. Hello. <laughs> he wants to be involved. Um, okay. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstead. I'm Lucas and I'm so happy that you are with us today. Today I'm a bit in the kitchen. I'm going to tell you why. And Lucian is... Yeah, uh, Lucian is going to be my helper and my cameraman this morning. Uh, just say hi, Lucian. Hello. <laughs> he wants to be involved. Lucian wants to be involved and uh, he also wants to do his own uh, channel. little channel and I think he's still planning. The school exams are currently finished, which means the kids are at home all the time. And although I love it and I enjoy every bit of it with them being at home, it did kind of mess up my routine a little bit and I have to adapt and adjust. Now, the past four days was a bit of a hot mess for me um, just because you know things are a bit out of order like this morning for instance my daughter decided to rearrange her room and to clean all her pet cages the snake cage and the hedgehog cage and all of that stuff and you know her bed is halfway in the hallway uh, Although I enjoy having the kids here, things can be a bit disruptive in the sense that I can't just follow my normal routine as usual. And it's no blame to the kids on that. It's just I didn't plan. <laughs> I didn't anticipate that things will be so distractive to me. Uh, things like... You know, the kids are at home, they've got friends over, um, they make something to eat for themselves every half, an hour, every half an hour or so, and then it's back to cleaning the kitchen again. And after you've done that and you start with something else, you get back into the kitchen and start cleaning kitchen again. <laughs> things, things like that. So it's just... Um, I wouldn't say disruptive, but it is distracting. You know, things distract you from what you normally do during a day. And it's understandable. It's a season, it's holidays, it's fun, and I have to adjust. So for the first time, really, last night I decided to plan my day ahead, and I told the family, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, but also thinking about what it is that actually distracts me from my normal flow of daily life um, is simple things like if I had the meals or snacks planned or something available for them, they won't, you know, come in and dirty the kitchen the whole time as, you know, as much or, uh, um, you know, quickly. Luckily, they make their own food. They are quite capable. Um, but we are still in the habit that we will make food and stuff now and only clean up later. Um, and then things can, you know, start piling up in 
in, in, in the scullery or in the uh, zinc washing up area. Um, and it can add, you know, frustrations and I want to try and make things easier for them, have something available that they can grab and go, you know, have a snack, quickly clean up or at least pack it in the, in the dishwasher or something like that. So the space is more or less um, clean and tidy at all times. So one of the things that I'm um, going to do is to have baked biscuit bread, you know, available for them because it's a nice snack. You can have it sweet or savory or any which way and something that, you know, uh, can be there. And I'm, for this recipe, I'm actually following uh, Jessica's um, Jessica from Roots and Refuge uh, recipe in a way I am adjusting to it you know with things that I do have on hand um, but I think yeah uh, let's quickly do this and I'll think I'll try to uh, uh, bake a week or at least a couple of days worth of biscuits uh, for them um, so they can, you know, when they feel like a snack, quickly bake an egg, pop it on there for breakfast or something like that, or, you know, some uh, peanut butter and jelly, if they feel like having a sweeter, the flies are irritating me, uh, you know, uh, peanut butter and jam, if they feel that they want to have a bit of a sweeter snack, or um, yeah, bacon, egg and cheese, or Lucian is always with the cheese, so <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we can, I think it, it's just something and I want to see if that makes, you know, snack time a bit easier. Um, I'm also going to uh, do my preparation for dinner tonight. Uh, we actually did some of the things last night. Um, last night or yesterday, uh, my daughter Michaela helped me to. Um, my daughter helped me to blanch um, and pack and freeze. You know the beans uh, that we harvested, and I don't want to lose that. But I'm also not going to uh, eat basically four or five kilograms of beans and you know prepare that for dinner. So yeah, we uh, uh, blanched that and um, strained it, uh, uh, packed it, portioned it, eating. Um, packs that we can make as, uh, you know, with uh, side dishes and put it in the freezer. So that already is also something that we um, started So it will make prepping our dinners, you know, also a bit easier if we continue on that. You know, things in the garden is starting to come in. Uh, we are, like I said, harvesting quite a lot of beans. We've had, uh, taken some onions. Um, zucchinis. zucchinis coming in, the squashes are, or some of the squashes are close to uh, ready, the spinach and Swiss chard um, are coming in, uh, I've got some back pressure on my uh, cauliflowers and, uh, you know, bra brassica, so yeah, we also harvest some of that, but it goes to the chickens. Um, but, you know, it's, it's nice to see that the garden is nice and lively. But anyway, so as um, things from the garden come in and we harvest bit by bit every day, as soon as I've got enough produce ready for um, 
a recipe well we obviously use a lot of our produce fresh but as it piles up I want to say as we stockpile it as soon as something is uh, ready to be processed we'll can it or we'll blanch it and freeze it or you know do whatever we do to preserve our food as well because I don't want anything off the garden going to waste really unfortunately like I said some of the brassicas with the best pressure um, you know it will go to the chickens uh, but hopefully soon you know the back pressure will also uh, subside a bit um, and we can start harvesting and processing that as well so this morning like I said we're going to make some biscuits for snacks I am following Jessica from Roots and Refuge, um, you know, a recipe, although I am making some adapt adaptions. I've done, I've done a couple of recipes, um, tried a few and followed a few. And the last time we did Jessica's uh, recipe and it came out perfectly something that we all uh, enjoyed so I'm going to now like I say stick with that we've done it previously and we adapt but it's something that we enjoy okay and I'm going to try and make you know enough biscuits for at least uh, a couple of days a couple of days is a few days for us <laughs> Yeah, well, depending on how you like it. Um, I love everything that you make. Yeah, but not always. It's fine not to like everything, um, as long as we don't waste. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, this recipe, I think, double, double or maybe threefold. Let's see where we get. Okay, so the recipe, I'll also link that in the description and I'll link Jessica's channel, uh, channel and her video, video for her original recipe. And she's got some awesome content. I've always followed Roots and Refuge. She started a new channel, The Farmer's Table, uh, where she teaches a lot about uh, from scratch cooking. Uh, I think that's really Great, let's see where we are at now. I'm going to quickly do some math. Will you put that in the dustbin for that, thanks? They can't really see your math. <coughs> it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to triple the recipe. So flour will be 855. I'm using uh, uh, cake flour and not bread flour or all purpose. It's cake flour so um, adapt your weight according to the type of flour that you use if you use uh, whole wheat or um, all-purpose flour cake flour bread flour it all differs in density so therefore your weight also uh, needs to be adjusted if you want to be really strict about your following a recipe i'm not the best cook i'm learning or improving so i try and take a recipe and make sure that it is at least successful and on a lot of only braai what is going on braai is barbecue well kind of like barbecue it's all can only do that and make um Boy yeah. And it's very spicy. Uh, where's the baking powder, boy? Um, just two buckets and then the... No, put that aside. Okay. The initial recipe calls for two and a half cups of um, all-purpose flour. I used um, okay. cake flour, tablespoons of baking powders. I'm tripling, so I need about six. Seems quite a lot. Okay, five. Okay, that's a bit extra. Six. Okay, will you 
please go put that empty packet in the dustbin, please. Okay, and one teaspoon of salt per batch, I think it's three, maybe a bit less because this is coarser salt. I'll stay with a, about two. Okay, I'm just going to mix these dry ingredients through a bit. There it is. Okay. Get me a big knife. Yeah, it's fine. Quickly cut the butter. Okay, so the recipe calls for one stick or 100 grams more or less of butter on this single recipe we are going we are tripling our recipe so we are going for about 300 grams just a little bit more Three, <coughs> uh, 350 grams more or less so if i measure it right there Half and block. No, there's already been used somewhere. Okay, boy, this can go back to the. Is it? No, no, it's fine. Okay, all I'm doing now is to basically break the butter down a bit because we're going to use smaller pieces to mix it in with with the um, flour yeah you're right the dry ingredients it's probably the nice way to say it oh. No, no, just throw it to the, throw it in that little bucket that goes to the chickens. And, uh, you see, our Afrikaans and my friend would speak in a bucket. <laughs> Bowl. <laughs> Container. Yeah, an Afrikaans a bucket can mean anything from a bowl to a little container to a, 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 a oh. porridge bowl to a car a, a, or well it's not a car it's what you americans will call a truck <laughs> um well pickup truck it's a bucky <laughs> this is a bucky and uh, fort range is also a bucky Yes, and it, and it dries just when you boil it. <laughs> yeah. uh, wait, 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 wait. It's ice cold. No, it must be ice cold. We want it about those pieces. No, I just little bit of ice No, 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 it's fine. I'll... I mean, you can just break it. It is shaven, so just clumps like this, you can see how easily it breaks. So you can just you know, put it in, but just make sure that you break it down this. I hope it rains. It seems like it's going to rain, but we definitely need some rain to break this the heat wave and this dry spell that we are going through but it hasn't started raining yet we prefer butter to margarine but to us it's really quite unaffordable at this moment so all I'm going to do now 
is softly work this butter into the dry ingredients. Will you? What you can do for me is get the measuring jug. Okay, let me show you here. Okay, and what you do then is uh, please put in and see the cups. Put in three, so you'll go to two, and then another one and a half. So you do two and one and a half into that bowl. Just in the bowl. No, you can do it, yes, boy. I'm gonna spill if you carry it all over the put down the vision, put down the measuring jar. Right here, go and get the milk, bring the milk here. Isn't that easier? <laughs> Thank you for helping. And this is the way that you learn. Okay. So two cups. Perfect. Okay, in the Okay, and another one and a half. Perfect. It's fine. It doesn't need to be exact. Yes, because it is a little bit um, over the top. No, it's fine. It doesn't need to be exact. Okay, now go put that in the sink again and put the milk back in the fridge. That's fresh milk. Okay, now uh, get the white vinegar from the cupboard. Put it slowly into the tablespoon. Okay, so it's one tablespoon for the recipe. Oh. We are tripling it, so we are putting in three. I think I'm smell it. Mm. Two. Two. Three. Okay, let's put that back in the cupboard. Why do you need a vinegar? It cooks the milk, so you're making butter milk or sour milk. Okay, so you can just slowly uh, mix that for there. No. Oh yeah, well we can, so I'm not going to use it again. Yeah, just put it down. Well, I'm going to use it again to mix this with that. No, I will use the spoon, that's why the spoon is here. So you don't you have to do it quick, just to mix it through, and then we're going to leave it so it gets goes sour. No, don't stick your fingers in there. <laughs> you can taste, but... Um, it tastes like normal milk. Stalled like normal milk? Yeah. So it doesn't go sour yet. No, leave it. Okay, you can leave it now so it goes sour. Okay, will you? Give Daddy a uh, normal fork. Mm. Yeah. So what we are going to do now, I've rubbed some of the butter, broken down the bigger clumps. And what we are going to do now, because I don't want to let the butter melt, is to... <coughs> Sorry. What we are doing now is to mix the butter into the flour mixture so that it kind of like goes like a crumbly sandy well not consistency but that it looks kind of 
I, I can see the it's getting sour. Some more getting sour. Yep. You can like see this where the particles at this and it is mostly sour. Yep. It's getting sour. Okay, solution, what is the butter going to do with your flour mixture? If we have it in here like these little bits of chunky. Um, uh, you know, don't know. It yeah. makes your, it makes your, see we don't melt it in or work it in as much. We just, yeah, you know, have little bits of uh, butter in here. So when you bake it, it makes it a little bit flaky. Like, you remember when Dad made, made the pie crust? Uh -huh. It's flaky. That's why you put your butter in um, cold and you don't let it melt. You don't really, you mix it into the flour, the flour but you don't really combine it with the flour. It's like, yeah, there's a butter piece. Yeah, okay. It's Thank you. Just but I think this is fine. I think all the big parts are rather broken into smaller pieces. It's low chili. It's low chili? No, okay, those are the different types. Okay. It's fine. Well, I think that's a bit low chili. Okay. Um, Is that almost a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put it in little by little. Because you don't want to overflow it. Oh, it's going to be a disaster for cleaning. <laughs> well, I hope it gets sour pretty soon. Am I floating? Yeah, yeah. Whoops. Whoa. Nearly made it drop twice. <laughs> Whoop is okay, but two times it is not an accident. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> put the rest in. But then we had a rock fly, that was fun. Just a row. Yeah, okay, put everything in. It's sour. <laughs> oh, that's good. I think it is going to be a little bit um, wet in the middle. Well, it does look wet, but we mix it through without over mixing it. As you let it stand a while, the flour will absorb the moisture. It won't be too wet. I'm innocent. <laughs> Looks like it was clean up yet. I think that it wasn't me. The so it okay. wasn't. Put it. that in the sink for me. And put this in the fridge for me. And now I can make jokes, jokes all the time. After cleaning, start a little bit wet. Oh yes, now it looks much better. I wish yeah. I could share this with your audience. Yeah. Okay, so we let it stand for a couple of minutes in the fridge. Um, and yeah, 
that seems like most of the moisture has been absorbed, which takes us to our next step. And now we are not making a mess. Um, what is espresso in Afrikaans? Espresso is Afrikaans. I will do English. On purpose. On purpose. We are not taking a mess because we are going to play with the devil at the point. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to get this dough out here. This want to smack it so hard. <laughs> Daddy guys want to smack it as well. Ah. It's sticky. Yeah, it's a bit wet. It's okay, I'll just... I think my ratio is a bit out. Oh, no. It's very wet. They, they have it on camera. It's on camera. Yeah, it's fine. It's, yeah. You can fix it still. The so one day that we are doing it on camera and it will be a disaster. <laughs> no, it's not a disaster. We can fix it. Okay, now we can pick it up without it sticking. It shows how consistency is getting there. Yeah, almost there. So my measurements might be off, but I'll have a look at it and just put the right measurements in the description. Or, like I said, just go and look at Jessica's channel for her recipe and follow that. But yeah, it seems like everything is going well now. You can still see the pieces of butter. Yeah, in the batter, so we didn't overwork, well not batter, the dough, so we didn't overwork the dough. Uh, Lucian, can I ask you a favour? These glass bowls, or oven bowls, um, oven pans, whatever you want to call it, just spray and cook it, shake the cane. So I'm just flouring, I'm using a whiskey glass uh, to cut as a cookie cutter, cut the dough. And I'm just flouring 
the rims. Oh, you can do it. Yes. Okay, and then we just place it in the pan. Okay, here we go. Just take a bit of flour, go around the edge. Are this really gonna move you guys? Uh, put it right on the edge of the other one. Press down, wiggle it, and then you take your So we have 26 crackers, biscuits. biscuits, but look at our hands, yeah. okay. it's time to wash. Let's quickly clean up. Okay, so into the oven at about uh, 210 for about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit less, we'll eyeball it. There we go, fresh biscuits out of the oven. Okay, come on, stop. 